Horvat breaking in. Deeks scores. Right there all over. And he still finds Zeltone. Joining us now, Intrepid Canucks reporter uh, Jeff Patterson. Jeff, thanks for doing this. How are you? I think I'm like a lot of people in Canuck Nation that's uh, a little disappointed that Brock Besser's season comes to a, a premature end. And, uh, you know, you just hope for uh, a full recovery for a guy that had captured the imagination of this city. I think back to, you know, when I heard the news that uh, his season was, in fact, done. It's just like so many memories and having the chance to have been there every single game and see all 29 goals that he scored in person. Uh, you know, some real highlights and uh, the way that he kind of grabbed this city and propped this city up when the Canucks weren't winning many games in the month of December and he was in a run of eight game or eight goals in a 10-game stretch and the hat-trick that he had on home ice on that Saturday night against Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, the All-Star, obviously, and the MVP there. So uh, some good memories from one terrific rookie season, but uh, alas, uh, we won't see him again, at least not on skates here uh, the rest of the way. Uh, we've been having this debate for the last 15 or 20 minutes or so. Um, I know you're in the press box watching the games, Jeff, but in-house for the people who bucked up to see the game, should there have been a replay of the incident or at the very least some sort of an announcement telling people who the player on the ice was? I mean, I heard the football argument, and I guess it's a little different just because uh, there's so many players on a football roster, and, you know, you get an announcement after every play with the tackle and the down and the distance and everything else, so we're kind of accustomed to that. It's not commonplace in hockey. I, mean, I wouldn't have a huge issue with it. Uh, I, I would say 90% of the rink would be able to see that it was a Canuck, and, you know, then you can do some deduction. And uh, you know, something tells me Ryan was probably distracted, probably on his phone, food and hand and all that kind of so you know I'm not sure that Ryan is necessarily the best judge of that situation but I you know I wouldn't have a huge issue if they made an announcement of who was injured I think the danger with a replay you guys kind of covered it off you just don't know the severity at that point um ultimately you know there was nothing gory uh that people shouldn't have seen but in that moment you just don't know and you know, the way he hobbled off the ice and down the tunnel. I mean, he was in some real distress there. Uh, I was in the group that thought, boy, if he's stretched out of the building, well, why not stretch him off the ice? But I will say the doctors uh, sit right behind the Canuck bench. They jumped into action. They were on the Canuck bench there as John Sanderson, the head medical mm-hmm. therapist, was, was doing his thing. And so I'll defer to them. They know what they're doing. I am not a doctor. I'm not going to pretend to be one. But uh, an announcement of the player down, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Jeff, is there anything hockey can do, and again, I'm putting you on the spot here, anything hockey, the NHL can do about the situation at the uh, the benches, where when when the gate is open, it's a dangerous situation, and I refer back to the Pacioretty Chara incident and how the NHL took care of the stanchion with the rounded plexiglass. Do you think there's an invention out there waiting to happen? Airbags for uh, hockey benches? It was. We've already had that suggestion, believe it or not. Okay. Um, no, it was a topic of discussion today. A couple of the players were asked about it. Uh, Daniel Sedin suggested that they don't need benches, that guys jump over the boards, and he's not wrong there. Uh, my counter to that is the goaltenders probably wouldn't like that, and I know they don't use the gates all that often, but whether you're pulling the goaltender mm-hmm. uh, in the run of play, whether you've yanked him and given him the hook, uh, or you know, just at the end of the period, I think goaltenders uh, like the fact that there is a gate there. That, uh, but maybe they would adapt too. Who knows? But I mean, for the skaters themselves, uh, the gates aren't necessarily, you know, vital. But then somebody said, well, now if you're jumping over the boards all the time, now you're on the risk of skate blades flying all over the place even more than they they do right now. So I'm not sure that there is an answer. Uh, it does happen. It seems uh, a couple of times each year. You don't like to see it happen, but something tells me that uh, they're not going to modify uh, the benches and the gates in the wake of of this particular incident. Mm, Jeff, after last night's performance, we elected to go with this poll question. Would you still prefer draft picks instead of Tyler Mott and Brendan Leipzig? 62% saying no. They'd rather have the players. 38% saying yes. What says you? Uh, Hard to argue with uh, Brendan Leipzig so far uh, in his production level. Two goals, three assists in three games. Uh, The overtime winner last night. Uh, He's got to tone down the penalties a little bit. Now, you know, that's how he 
Uh, he come as advertised. He's an energy guy, uh, plays the game at a high rate of speed, but he's got the skill to go along with it. And I think we've seen a little bit of that uh, in all the games that he has played. Uh, but I like the play that he makes it over time to hound the puck and, uh, you know, turn it over and then draw Halak out of the net. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, so far so good. That looks like a good trade. I know it's only three games in. You know, Tyler Mott's been understated and sort of subtle in the role that he is playing, but he looks like he's fit in reasonably well on that line with Brandon Sutter and Darren Archibald. So, so far so good, I think, for the Vancouver Canucks on the trade front there. Uh, and, yeah, I, I guess the warm bodies in this instance right now uh better than draft picks. But I fully understand where people are coming from on the draft pick front uh, when you're trying to rebuild. That, uh, you know, ultimately you got to give yourself as many tickets in that lottery as possible. And, uh, you know, so I don't think it excuses the organization from not picking up draft picks on the trade deadline. But the guys that they've got have, you know, come to town and fit in pretty seamlessly. Certainly Leipzig a little better uh, so far than Tyler Mott. Any issues with Jacob Markstrom being vocal towards his teammates? Uh, not really. I mean, I think he's seen that movie so many times before. The Canucks given up uh, the first goal. Uh, it wasn't in the first five minutes the way that it's happened on 20 occasions already this season, which is just a crazy number considering they played 66 games, but midway through the first period. And it, I, I'm not even sure it was the goal. I mean, the goal was the end result. And Travis Green said as much afterward. I mean, they were dreadful. Uh, in that opening period, they were outshot 10-2 to when the Islanders scored the first goal, uh, skating in quicksand. You know, we talk about the consistency from game to game, but even period to period with this group, and it is something that uh, the coach is going to have to try to figure out because he hasn't been able to get his uh, finger on the issues of why, you know, they, they just can't raise their level of play when they come out and get off to a poor start. And, and um, you know, I think that was sort of all of that wrapped up on Jacob Arstrom last night. The goal went in, but I think he was just frustrated at the way his team was playing against an Islander team. Yeah, you got to keep the opponent in mind, too. I mean, that's an Islander team that gives up more shots than anybody in the NHL. And halfway through the first period, the Canucks had two shots on goal. So, uh, you know, why weren't the Canucks able to do things that everybody else in the National Hockey League does to this Islander team? Ultimately, the Canucks were able to turn the tide. The penalty shot, I think, was huge. Uh, you know, not just that Archibald scored, but the fact that it's Darren Archibald mm -hmm. getting that opportunity and making the most of it. I think penalty shot goal give a team a lift uh, at the best of times. But to have a guy in that role... And, you know, what a nice story he's authoring. I mean, it was already a nice story just getting the, the call and signing his contract. But three goals in the last seven games, a penalty shot goal, a shorthanded goal. Uh, you know, I think other guys in that locker room could look to Darren Archibald uh, for a little inspiration here over the final 16 games. What's in his future, Jeff? He's a UFA in the summer. Yeah, I mean, the Canucks, uh, you know, if they're... Uh, if they're serious about keeping them, they may have some competition because it's not just a showcase for the Vancouver Canucks. Obviously, they have uh, first right of refusal before his contract is up at the end of the year, but something would tell me that uh, Darren Archibald probably turning some heads around the National Hockey League, you know, as teams look to fill out their roster with fourth-line guys that can penalty kill, can be physical, uh, and do it at a relatively cheap price point. So, uh, you know, if the Canucks uh, were to open some negotiations and try to get him locked up, uh, you know, I don't want them to do anything crazy on the contract front there, but uh, I think they could do worse. And you know how much Travis Green likes Darren Archibald and the idea of a guy that's got some pushback and a little bit of jam to his game. Um, you know, I, I think the Canucks uh, probably will have to uh, entertain that notion of getting him signed up because uh, if they don't and he gets to free agency, I think uh, this performance here, this audition, certainly would uh, have uh, turned some heads around the National Hockey League. And Jeff, take for 10 and 1-1, one and one, 14 48 of, uh, of ice time. He gets a couple of shifts in overtime, four shots, five hits, two takeaways. Increased ice time for Jake. He's going to get even more ice time before the season ends because of what happens to fellow right winger. What has happened to fellow right winger Brock Besser? What are you seeing lately? Yeah, I mean, early in the season, his standout performances were easy to document because they were so few and far between. The Detroit game with the eight shots, the goal, and the hit on Cronwall, and the game in San Jose just before Christmas where he was skating miles and he scored. And, you know, it was another one of those games where you thought it's there, like that's the Jake for 10, and why can't this happen on even a semi-regular basis? But I think in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a few more performances, I think, of the game in Dallas uh, where he scored on that breakaway and also 
also uh, got an assist on the Boucher goal where he, you know, turned Ham Hughes and carried the puck and showed patience and used his speed. Uh, the other night against the Rangers, I thought he was good. And then you get a night like last night. So now you're starting to get a little bit more of a body of work, and it is happening with a little more frequency. And so that's a good sign for Jake and for uh, for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, and I like the fact he was in overtime. And dangerous in overtime. He had that chance coming in, uh, cut to the middle, and got a quick shot away. And you know, I think the roof would have uh, blown off that building. It's just people, the people want Jake Vertanen to do well. Um, they're invested in him, and and so uh, it's slowly coming. But you know, for him, it, it just can't be once a week or once every ten days. He's got to find a way to harness that and bring it. And you're right. Uh, best row of the lineup. Uh, Travis Green said as much today that uh, you're probably going to see more of Horvat and Leipzig and Vertan and and uh, mm-hmm. I'm all right with that. And I think most people in the city would be uh, the way that uh, all three of those guys performed last night. Jeff, thanks for this. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. All right, guys.